Today we're going to look at Bao Hong labeled master's choice. I'm assuming that this is Bao Hong artist quality paper labeled and packaged for Jerry's and Blick's artist markets. And I'm going to compare this with Bao Hong Academy. So the first noticeable difference is that my master's choice arrives as loose sheets and they cost slightly more than comparably sized Bao Hong Academy paper on a tightly constructed block. So the block has a great weight and feel, and it seems to me that the block is the difference between the two. You pay a little extra and you get a block, and you pay a little more extra and you get their artist quality top tier paper. The block also comes with a little plastic tool, presumably for removing pages, whether this is necessary or not remains to be seen, but either way, you get a free little scoring and bone folder type tool. So I wanted to make sure that these are in fact different papers and just look at the texture and get a feel for them, and they definitely are. My Baohang Master's Choice has a medium to almost rough texture. It's a bit more of a textured cold press. And my Baohang Academy cold press has a flatter, lighter texture, a little more comparable to something like Fabriano. So if that is something that you appreciate in a cold press paper, just a little calmer texture to paint on, then I would definitely think about using the Academy. Baohang Academy is clearly trying to be a value paper which is great, but one of the problems that I've had historically with other all cotton value paper, looking at you, Legion, Stonehenge, Aqua, is that tape is really harmful to the surface. It will just lift some of the surface off. So I wanna make sure that Academy, and frankly, Baohang does not do this. So tape will be part of the tests that I'm going to put these papers through. So one of the things I want to know is what it's like to sketch on these papers. I don't do too much pencil sketching on cold press, but inevitably there will be some line work and I wanna know what that feels like as expected on the less aggressively textured Academy paper, my line work with this coal erase pencil just feels a lot less bumpy and a lot easier to put down. So that is one advantage to using the Academy paper. And if you do a lot of pre-sketching of your watercolor work, I would recommend thinking about the Academy in relation to that. For a simple wet on dry wash, Academy feels just really good, really smooth and solid. It does not have a lot of personality that I can identify. I don't think much one way or another about it, which is exactly what I want when I put down a wet on dry type of wash. I'm able to do a little bit of bad behavior. I'm able to backtrack a bit push things together, get some blending and some so oh, on second thought kind of manipulation in. And I want to see if I get a lot of watermarks and streaking due to that. Even at this early stage, it appears that my bad behavior will not disrupt my wash too much. My master's choice behaves similarly. Like using Arsh, I find that I need to pile the water on a bit before it starts to sink into the surface. So I think that this might be a little bit harder sized than the Academy paper. So right off the bat, I would say that if you are a Fabriano fan, you may like the Academy. And if you are an Arsh or Strathmore or Saunders fan, you might be more inclined to use the Baohang Master's Choice or Baohang Artist's Papers. Let's do some charging into a wet wash, and I'm going to use some staining colors that tend to travel quite a bit, starting with Winsor Newton Green Gold and adding some M. Graham Cerulean Hue. This is basically a phthalo blue, and as expected, M. Graham has a lot more charging property just as a paint than the Winsor Newton. And I see a fair amount of motion on the master's choice. 
Again, I'm trying to include some bad behavior, so I'm overplaying this a little bit, swishing my color around, forcing the blend, and trying to see if a little bit of going outside the box and having less than perfect technique is going to form some cauliflowering and some disruption. The Academy paper has very similar behavior. I would say that perhaps the charging capabilities of my color are a little more subdued. I'm not really sure about that. And again, I want to kind of overblend this just a little bit, work these together nicely and just see, will this create backgrounds and shapes and undesirable textures? So far, even though everything is not dried, these are both looking really good. The next thing that I wanted to test was how well each of these papers will hold up to masking fluid, which is often one of the most challenging things that we throw at our papers. So I'm going to apply a little bit of masking fluid using a paint shaper tool to each of these surfaces. And we'll see how each of them does with a little bit of masking fluid and some painting over the mask. Another way that I periodically block paint off of the surface is with masking tape. Sometimes cut into different shapes, sometimes not. I wanted to really push some artist's tape down into this paper, paint over it, and see what kind of result I got, as well as whether any of the lifting of that tape would damage the surface at the end of the process. So I've put down some artist's tape, used a handle of a brush to really push some of it into the texture of the paper, and I'm painting over both of these squares of masking tape with some intense red color. If this seeps under the tape, we will know about it. I'm also going to want to test some lifting using both a staining color. So I've added Winsor Newton PY129 Green Gold, a nice staining azo based color to my sheet, and I'm going to paint in with something non-staining looking around my palette, which is my kind of at-home travel palette and not fully stocked, takes me a minute to land on something which I know will lift, and I've landed on an ultramarine pink. It's kind of a strange color. I don't use it all that often, but now that I put some of it down, I feel like I should revisit it more frequently. And this should lift if I attempt to do an intentional lift once both of these colors have dried. So as I still continue to wait for some of those swatches to go from damp to dry, I'm going to do a little bit of layering over some of the initial leaf shapes that I painted just to see how these papers layer. Do I get lifting when I add additional layers of paint? So far, looking pretty good. I'm not getting lifting or traveling. I'm getting a nice transparent layer blocked on top of the information that I've already painted. As you can see, I'm not going for anything fabulous or precise, just a little bit of added information and depth of color on top of the color that I've painted. And I'm pretty happy with this result. Again, when I do wet on dry painting, my criteria are pretty simple. I just don't want to feel like my paper is getting in my way in any capacity. And the Baohang Academy really passes this test nicely. So I apologize for just kind of losing momentum and focus as I did some layering tests on the Baohang Master's Choice paper. I'm so happy with how this behaves that I'm just willing to cut it short. Um, this layers nicely. Uh, I can add wet layers on top of my dry layer with absolutely no concern about traveling or smearing. Sometimes you just know when it's working and that is very apparent in this case. I experimented a little bit with some softened wet bleeding edges and transitions on top of an existing layer of paint and everything just absolutely behaved beautifully. I have found that 
in many ways my Bao Hong master's choice is in absolutely a paper that performs much better than its price class would suggest. It is really pleasurable to use. So let's just say that both of these pass this little test with flying colors. You can layer without worrying about the integrity of the paint below as long as you've allowed things to dry, at least for about 40 minutes to an hour. I wanted to play and just make sure that I can create soft edges and really allow an edge to dissolve and trail off into nothingness. And I'm able to do that on the Academy paper. Removing my tape in both instances was a beautiful experience with absolutely no worries. So each of these papers has completely trounced the usability of unfortunately, Legion Stonehenge Aqua. I want to like that paper because I love Legion's other papers, but the Aqua does not hold up to tape, and I simply do too much taping of edges and taping as a mask to really allow that paper to be serviceable for me outside of a very narrow focus. Glazing unrelated colors on top of other colors, making a very dramatic optical color mix shift by layering blue on top of red, I get very beautiful separation. The red does not seem to bleed over much into either layer of blue. The Academy does it slightly more than the master's choice, but not to the point where it's a make or break thing for me. And now I finally have an opportunity to layer some staining and some non-staining color over my masking fluid tests. And once again, we have to wait for those to dry. Overall, I'm really impressed with what I'm able to get from both Academy and Master's Choice. My swatches for lifting appear to be dry enough to do some lifts. So I'm going to add some water and put both of these lifting swatches through their paces a bit. I'm noticing right away that on Academy, I'm not getting a lot of shifting and changing when I add water. So this indicates to me that things are not going to lift the same way. Lifting on the master's choice, I get a slight amount of lifting on my staining color as expected, and I get a fair amount of lifting on my non-staining color. Not as dramatically as I might like, but lifting nonetheless. I notice right away that these propensities toward lifting are much more subdued on the Academy. In order to get reasonable lifting on my non-staining color, I really have to work that paper towel down into my puddle of water. So this is one area where I do notice a pretty significant difference between Academy and Master's Choice. The way that Academy is sized suggests that there is less sizing or softer sizing or just a different type of sizing, which makes lifting significantly more difficult. This can be good if you paint in a very layered way where you do not like to experience a lot of travel and a lot of melting of pigment as you layer, but it can be a negative if you do find that lifting is a significant part of your painting strategy. Because I'm fairly satisfied with the soft edge that I'm able to get, I'm still pretty sold on Academy as being a reasonable paper for both finished work and artistic exploration. But if you really like to lift paint, then you can expect a typical Arche Fabriano Saunders Winsor Newton Pro type of performance from the Master's Choice labeled Baohang paper. As I wait, for my masking fluid to dry off completely, I decided I wanted to noodle around a little bit and just see what happens if I introduce a lot of water and a softened edge on top of an already painted area. 
Now the two colors in that blend that I have there are both staining colors, so I don't expect to see a lot of lifting, smearing, traveling, etc. And this is accurate. I'm able to paint something that has a soft edge on the master's choice just beautifully. And I'm able to make some additions and soften one of the edges on top of the painting that I've done on the Academy paper just as well. So I really believe that both of these papers offer us an opportunity to layer more elaborately and with more control than student grade and cellulose papers in general. So that's really nice to know and much as expected. At long last, my masking fluid is dry and do I detect a little bit of masking fluid failure on the Academy? I think I do, but I also think that might be user error. It felt a tiny bit damp, just a breath damp, so I'm going to wait a little longer. The Baohang Master's Choice is dry already, good and dry, so that comes up beautifully with a crisp edge, at least as crisp as I'm going to get on this fairly highly textured paper. As I go back into the Academy, having given it a couple seconds more drying time, I don't notice any of this lifting or paper damage. And I think that as long as you really, really keep yourself in line, really are patient and really allow your mask to dry fully, you won't run into problems on the Academy paper. If you are a bit impatient, do everything you can to curb that tendency and you should be fine. If impatience is just your default setting and it's really make or break that you are able to remove masking fluid when you want to, then I suppose that the master's choice labeled paper would be better. I don't think that the slightly rough texture and the problems that this presents in getting a very clean and precise mask make the trade-off worth it, however. So far, both of these papers have performed very similarly, and in cases where the performance isn't similar, it's comparable. There's not a strong sense that this facet of this paper blows the other out of the water. You could have a great time painting on either of these. One more test I really want to try is to see what happens with separating pigments. So I'm going to paint in a mix of some granulating pigments, some Burnt Umber by Daniel Smith, some Burnt Sienna by Daniel Smith, and a little bit of my Windsor Green Gold. So I have granulating pigments and I have a staining non-granulator all mixed in together with very little pushing around with the brush. I want to see separation, I want to see irregularities, I want to see what these paints are going to do left to their own devices, because paper choice makes a big difference in some of these separating recipes, and I want to see what happens with those different types of pigments introduced. Here I'm repeating this with some green gold mixed with some of the Daniel Smith burnt sienna. So I should see separation and just a little bit of pigment magic happening in each of these swatches. So I'm going to set these two swatches aside for a while to let them fully dry. And as I do, I'm going to try out some wet on dry painting in a little floral motif. Now, this painting is not me at my finest. That is not the point. My point is to see what happens when I do some wet on dry layering, and again, allowing myself some bad behavior. Can I get away with layering over paint that should technically probably be just a little bit drier? All of that remains to be seen. As we wind down, let's take a look at our pigment separation test. So when I look at both of these pigment separation swatches, the swatch on Academy seems very smooth, but a bit devoid of personality. 
the swatch on Baohang Master's Choice has a bit more pop and presence. I'm going to put in a pigment separating background on this floral. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to give Academy ample opportunity to redeem itself a little bit. I'm going to include some staining blue, so thalo based blue, and I'm going to include a lot of granulating earth pigment, burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little raw umber, all of these by Daniel Smith. So these are some of the best earths that money can buy and some of my favorite. They should introduce a lot of personality and texture into these very lightly worked mixes. Let's see what I can generate using this approach to painting and see what Academy will do under these circumstances. In the interest of fair comparison, I'm going to paint up a swatch of my Baohang Master's Choice using the same approach and similar colors. My thalo based blue, my raw umber, my burnt sienna, and just see what kind of magic can be created using these granulating and non-granulating colors and allowing them to intermix without a lot of intervention and pushing. So I feel like this mixture is okay, but a little bit on the lifeless side. I don't really feel like the magic of these pigments has been maximized and things look a little bit overworked to me, even though they've only been lightly worked. So this is kind of a strike against this material. You will not get your greatest wet in wet painting done on Baohang Academy. Now it's time to remove this dry sheet and I can insert the supplied tool for this purpose and run it around the edge of my block. As I suspected, it is really a bit of a chore to remove this paper from this block. This can be good or bad. If I were doing really soggy wet and wet painting, I think this would be great. I would love to have a block that was this resistant to removal, but as we just saw, I don't think that extreme wet in wet is the superpower of this paper. So that makes the difficulty of removing sheets just a little bit anticlimactic. However, I do appreciate that the block is just really well constructed. Here we come to the failing point of both Academy and Baohang. So we've removed our paper from our block, and as I flip my paper over and look at it, we come to the disadvantage offered by both Baohang and Baohang Academy. Both of these papers are extremely sided. What I have is effectively a paper that has a wet wash capable side and a light wash and drawing capable reverse. So this has some advantages. It would be a great sketchbook or greeting card paper. This has its time and its place, but I don't want that time and place to be when I've bought a watercolor block specifically. So that's something to think about. The savings that we will get when you purchase these papers can be a bit of an illusion. I'm not completely sold on Academy as a great wet in wet performer, but for a lot of other purposes, just about every other purpose I can think of, Baohang Academy is a pretty terrific watercolor paper. And if you like a softly textured, not too terribly bumpy cold press paper, you could certainly do a lot worse. Let's recap what we've learned about our papers. Baohang Academy is a paper that I would characterize by its flat and somewhat delicate surface nature. The sheets that I was able to purchase on Amazon were a beautifully constructed block of 10 by 14 sheets. This is approximate. The sheet size is slightly larger on each dimension. This block was priced at a little over $26 US on Amazon as of the time of this video. Pigment is slightly harder to lift on Baohang Academy and really wants to cling and stick. So if lifting is important to you, this may not be your favorite paper.
However, if you paint in a very layered approach, letting your paints dry in between layers, this paper may be an excellent choice for you. Masking fluid goes down nicely, and provided we give everything all the time that it needs to dry, we can get some beautifully clean masked edges, and we won't have any problems applying this material to this paper. One of the disadvantages and reasons to avoid using this paper is that if you have a painting style that relies heavily on pigment dynamics and chemistry, if the separating and quirky characteristics of a line like Daniel Smith or Roman Schmall are incredibly appealing to you and really important to how you paint, then I believe that this will not be your favorite paper. Those characteristics are subdued on Baohang Academy almost to the point of non-existence. I do a lot of wet and wet painting, but I also do a fair amount of wet on dry, and I would opt to use Baohang Academy for the wet on dry purpose. I found that wet in wet behaviors were slightly on the more lifeless side. If you are interested in botanicals and florals and slowly constructed subjects, but a perfectly smooth hot pressed paper is a little bit flat for your tastes, this might be an excellent paper for you to study on and work on as well. Let's recap some of the differences that we might notice in our Master's Choice paper. Baohang Master's Choice is marked by a somewhat rougher surface texture. This is definitely rougher than Academy, but it's also rougher than a lot of average artists' papers. While not quite veering over into the territory of being a paper that I'd categorize as rough, it starts to approach that level of texture. My master's choice paper was sold to me in a 20-sheet packet. These sheets are also slightly larger than 10 inches by slightly larger than 14 inches. Some of these sheets are watermarked and some are not. The packet was a little over $28 US at Jerry's Artorama as of the time of this video. Overall, this paper has a slightly livelier characteristic when used for wet on wet painting than Academy, but I found that this wet in wet property was possibly slightly lacking compared to some of my other artist papers, namely Windsor Newton, Fabriano, and Arsh. Overall, the paper dries a bit faster than Academy, so this is something to be aware of in your workflow, and if you use something like Arsh, you are very familiar and comfortable with the timetable by which this paper will dry. Overall, wet in wet painting is more dynamic than it is on Academy. However, this is not really saying a great deal. I find the wet in wet dynamics of this paper to be acceptable, but pretty average and nothing to get totally excited about. The rough texture provides some personality, but it also is a disadvantage with sketching and a disadvantage in gaining very precise edge work, whether you're masking, sketching, or doing something with wet on dry. The feeling I get using my Baohang Master's Choice Cold Press is one of a very solid and steady everyday paper. There's nothing remarkable about it, and there's nothing terrible about it. It does the job, it does it consistently, and I'm learning what to expect from this paper. Solid performance at a reasonable price. Overall, when I characterize Baohang Cold Press Cotton Papers, that is the overarching theme that I reach. These papers are a good value, although not quite the best value possible. The differences between them are more differences of personality than they are differences of quality. You'll get more precision and better wet on dry handling if you use Academy. So if you do slowly developed layered subjects, things like florals or portraits, and you want some practice or some options for paper that's not terribly expensive, I would opt for the Academy.
If you do a bit more wet in wet painting and if lifting is part of your painting dynamic, then I would definitely opt for the master's choice over Academy. The one downside that I really think both of these papers share is that the aspect of them being a good value or a good buy is significantly diminished by the fact that the papers are very one-sided. There are better options if you do the math and factor in the two-sidedness of papers like Windsor Newton Professional, Blick Premier, which is created by Waterford for Blick, and possibly something like Kilimanjaro, which is created by Fabriano for Cheap Joes. Sometimes you can even find Fabriano Artistico at a price that really starts to make it make more sense to opt for that versus something like the Baohang Papers. However, if you are in a bit of a hurry, and if the pricing of Fabriano just is not at its low point, you could do much, much worse than to pick up a block or a packet of these Baohang papers. Also, if you are like me and you find that sometimes you just choke up in front of an expensive sheet of Arsh or Fabriano, this can be a great way to familiarize yourself with what cotton paper will do, with the different behaviors that you can expect from your paint on cotton paper, and just a really good solid way to get in practice making the kinds of paintings that are developed in the way that we really aren't able to develop our work using cellulose papers. I'd like to take a moment and thank you for joining me and taking this deep dive look at these papers. I hope that this has been informative and helpful. If you like this kind of thing, let me know in the comments what kinds of supplies and materials you'd like to see me talk about next. The comments is a great spot to do that, and you can also subscribe to the channel for more of this type of thing. If you are a watercolorist, a color collector, and a swatching enthusiast, consider swinging by my Etsy shop, dinadraws.etsy.com. I create smear-proof and smudge-proof mixing charts and grids, taking a lot of the work out of your color organization and making your painting just a bit more fun. I appreciate you joining me today, and I can't wait to talk about some more artistic topics again in the near future. Until that time, stay safe, take care, and happy painting.